I get my protein from the same place as your protein gets its protein, meaning I just go directly to the source. My guest today is Rod Gillis. He is the owner of Challenge FTX. Is that right? Yes, it is. That is correct. Year-round year outdoor trainings. You offer uh, boot camps, OCRs. What, what, what are OCRs? OCRs are obstacle course races. So maybe more military style, uh, mud crawls or rope climbs or different things like that. Um, kind of tapping into those more um, almost military-like challenges uh, that I know people have had an interest in an interest in and so I've kind of incorporated for helping people prepare for those in my uh, in my trainings as well and you also do uh, events as well with this with your company that is correct that is correct so similar to those obstacle course races um, we'll get a group of folks together we'll actually you know pick an event um, and you know work to not only prepare them for it but also in the event that they're looking for someone to do it with um, you know, go out there and do it with them. So it focuses on really kind of um, obviously fitness and getting people outdoors, but also the camaraderie aspect as the groups inherently are um, on the smaller side. I, I haven't really purposefully um, looked to really grow the business, uh, I guess, in the traditional sense. Um, people are always welcome to come and I do advertise, but I really emphasize the fact that you know, sometimes people can feel lost in their in their training so it's it's good to be able to provide a more personalized touch cool so the people come and they bond and they they work out outdoors exactly exactly you got it awesome and rod you're also um the coach at veganfitness.com which is how we know each other um yes i'm actually yes. going through the, the plant power challenge you are uh, my coach a fantastic coach <laughs> As well, well thank you thank you <laughs> yeah no that's um that is a, a humbling experience to say the least because um you know helping people on their individual journey you know towards you know making a, a, a shift to more of a, a vegan lifestyle you know there's a fitness side of it that is is huge but there's also the health side of it that's huge there's also the environmental impact so i think um you know i've I'm still on that journey. I've been vegan for a number of years now, but still, you know, there are a number of things that I've um, learned along the way. And I've always sought to really highlight or approach it from the uh, fitness side, because I feel as though it is often assumed that people who, you know, may follow a vegan lifestyle or plant-based lifestyle, they aren't able to develop muscle or, uh, you know, it's not the same. And so being able to kind of attack or approach that, that mindset head on and, and uh, kind of counter it and prove it to be incorrect is kind of where more of my passion lies as it relates to my journey um, in, in the fitness space, in the vegan space, and then obviously impacting the others, the health, the environmental, the animal aspect of, of all um, as well. So and it is it is so impactful as well. I mean, you can take one look at, at your Instagram, and you you can see that um, there's there's no deficiencies going going on or anything like that. Um, your training is is quite unique as well. Um, so I was wondering if you can tell us a bit more about how you train. Yeah. So I I don't necessarily um, I guess fit myself in one in a, in, a, in a bucket. I don't look to fit myself in a bucket. So. What I mean by that is I'm an advocate of everything from trail running to, uh, you know, traditional weightlifting to uh, kayaking. Um, what else? Uh, I, I mix in uh, boot camp style uh, exercises as well. So battle ropes or jump ropes. So I'm a, just an advocate of moving um, and really just training your body from all different perspectives, training your body from all different um, angles and the, the benefits of not just kind of pit, pigeonholing yourself or putting yourself in, in one dimension. Uh, that's kind of the way I approach training and just things in general. So, 
cool so what actually got you started in your health and fitness journey yeah um the fitness side of it came first i would say i played uh football in high school and so i was i was very scrawny and so uh i joined and went out for the football team because um they didn't have cuts so everyone was allowed to to be on the team so i i felt like well I have a, uh, I, at least I know I won't be cut. So I did that. I, I knew nothing about football, but I um, just started going to the gym with some of my, my teammates um, and really kind of developed a passion there and, and never slowed down. Um, the health side came a number of years later. And I think that it largely came, you know, when I did go plant-based, when I did go vegan, however, I, I didn't realize it, but I was actually shifting to more of a health mindset. Um, anyway, you know, I had stopped drinking like the, the heavier sodas, as I call them, like the, the, the uh, Coca-Colas and Pepsis. And I was shifting more towards teas and ginger ale. I saw myself as doing better because it wasn't a, you know, a dark soda um, and, and it didn't have at, that much sugar. Even when I was not vegan, I started to shift away from um, meats and I, certain meats, and I had not even realized it, but like sausages and, and even the beefs and different things like that. I, I was slowly kind of becoming mindful of it. And then as I really kind of opened my eyes to the vegan perspective of things, I, I, it, it allowed me to kind of take a step back and look at the fact that I was making changes, not necessarily moving towards a vegan lifestyle, but I was making those changes anyway. Um, so it, it was a gradual transition at kind of worked out pretty nicely oh it's interesting so how long have you been have you been doing this lifestyle on the vegan diet yeah so i've been fully vegan since september of um 2017 so for a little while now for a little while now i i shifted i went vegetarian first actually and that was because i did quite a bit of traveling for work and I needed to figure out how to kind of navigate um, traveling to places that I was not familiar with the foods or the restaurants or different things like that. So uh, going vegetarian did allow that process to be a little bit more manageable. But after a while, I was just like, I'm going to do this. I didn't necessarily know how that I was going to do it, but I was going to make the transition and I was going to you know, prepare uh, as best I could for it um, when traveling in particular. And I, I haven't looked back since. Awesome. Awesome. What, what kind of benefits did you experience from going from, you, you said it was a gradual process from meat to vegetarian to vegan. Um, yeah. yeah. Could you explain a little bit more about how you felt through that transition process? For me, the... I would say the biggest thing that kind of caught me off guard when I first started, uh, when I first kind of completely eliminated meat, I still was vegetarian at the time. But the first thing for me was that I noticed that I was, I stopped being bloated. And the reason that was interesting was because I didn't even realize I was bloated. You know, that came, it was just a feeling of being that much lighter without even uh, being aware that there was an issue. So that was the thing that caught me, caught me off guard too at at first. But since then I've noticed in the gym, my recovery time, uh, I, I do get soreness, but my recovery time is, I feel significantly better. I, I feel as I still listen to my body. Um, but I can work out pretty consistently. Um, I can go a good stretch and, uh, you know, I'll take the breaks as I need them a day or two. I definitely incorporate those in there, but I have noticed that um, I'm able to rebound um, that much more quickly since I've gone plant-based. So I, I, I'm, I'm, that's the other, one of the big, other biggest benefits that I've, that I've experienced. And, you know, I think the other thing that's a topic that you don't hear too, too much about or maybe people don't even feel all that comfortable discussing is the fact that when you do go plant-based, you are 
inherently going to be taking in more um, more fiber. Uh, and so you're, you're really just helping to keep things uh, moving, we'll say, uh, throughout your body. And I think that's just another overall benefit where uh, you don't necessarily um, realize it, but your body's benefiting from the fiber, from these other more complex carbs that it can that serve a purpose in, in, in your body, in your body's overall processing. So those are some of the biggest changes that I've noticed. What about the, the whole testosterone myth? I've, I've had my testosterone tested, um, since going vegan, I have not been told of anything that's been problematic with my testosterone levels. So, um, I, I have no, I've had never had any issues uh, uh, with that. I'll, I'll, put, I'll speak for, for myself. And I honestly don't know of any of really any vegans that, that have, that I've, uh, I've spoken and interacted with. So, but it's a common question. So. Yeah. And I suppose an even more common question for you as you know, you're a vegan bodybuilder, you might be sick of this. You get it all the time. And I see, um, your meals on, on uh, social media, they, they look amazing. Um, yeah, like really, really um, cool and, again, unique um, meals for, for, for a vegan. You know, you wouldn't expect it. So it's kind of um, breaking the stereotype. So you're yeah. really doing a, a great job at that. So, but the question everyone must ask is where do you get your protein from? Uh, and... <laughs> the answer that I will, depending on my mood, um, the answer I will kind of jokingly give people is I get my protein from the same places your protein gets its protein, meaning I just go directly to the source, you know, so the f- animals don't just magically produce protein, they have to get it from an ultimate source. And, you know, the things that uh, humans eat the, the animals that humans are eating, they're, they're getting it from what they're eating, you know? So the, ultimately it's breaking down to them getting it from plants. So I view it as, you know, all things, all plants have protein. Now, some of them may not have a lot, um, in comparison to others, but all plants have protein. So I just, uh, have gone the route of going directly to the source cutting out the middleman or middle animal and uh, just kind of uh, uh, approaching it from that perspective. So where do I get my protein? My larger sources, I would say are beans, lentils, oats, um, hemp seeds, chia seeds, black seeds. I, I cook with the tempeh, uh, which is fermented soybeans. Um, I will use tofu from time to time. Chickpeas uh, are, are, are very big too, um, you know, whether it's pasta or chickpeas by themselves in their own dish. So I, I get them from a variety of, of, of plants. Um, so that's kind of where I get it, get my protein from. Yeah, you look like you're doing good. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't say that I've, I've run into necessarily um, any issues in, in, in finding that, so... So I will say, I I will say though, uh, that, you know, you're, you're depending on what your goals are, you're still going to want to kind of track how much protein you're getting. If you have certain goals. Now, I think we, we live in, in a society that glorifies protein and people constantly hear you need protein, you need protein, you need protein. You really don't need as much as you may think you need. So it's, it's just an awareness, the fact that you can get protein from everywhere and, and that it's, um, it's a very important to your body, but so are things like fiber. So are things like the right types of fat. So are things like the right types of carbs. So it's about, uh, uh, that balance as well. So what would you advise somebody who maybe not into training so much on, on their protein levels? Is there a certain, uh, amount you would recommend as, as, as safe? Well, I just know that I, I, it escapes me what the, I know it is from more of a fitness angle, 
But I simply advise people that if they're not in a point where they're looking to necessarily track their protein, because, you know, as we, if we're, if, as we know, many people just kind of eat throughout the day, I would say you focus simply on getting a well-diversified diet throughout your day. Um, you focus on, you know, getting some nice high, uh, hearty say oats in your, in your day. Um, as I mentioned, some of those beans, some of those lentils, different things like that. And you will find that you're going to get what your body needs. Now, if you're trying to take it a step further, then yes, you can take it. Um, you can go the route of, of tracking. So you mentioned uh, food tracking as well. What, what advice would you give people? How, how do people uh, track their food? How, how would you do it? Or how do you so, do it? Um, I think you first need to determine what a baseline, what the general guidelines are, the general baseline for tracking. I know there are various apps out there that people will leverage, such as uh, my fitness pal or a chronometer so they can provide uh, uh, a, a framework for those who are uh, newer to tracking so I would just encourage people to to try that out um, get a feel for it that way and they will also have guidelines um, you know as I mentioned from a vegan fitness perspective kind of the realm that we work in but they'll also have guidelines for folks that are not necessarily uh, looking to approach it from from a full-on fitness standpoint at this time so Okay, cool. Uh, what advice would you give someone who was interested in making the transition to a vegan lifestyle? That's a good question. Um, my advice, I know what I did was I, I first created a list of things that I was eating now or what, what created a list of foods that I was eating that I knew were vegan. So identifying, and this is when I was not, when I was not vegan, when I was still kind of eating everything, identifying those things that would, I was familiar with. So what was that? Oftentimes I was like my oatmeal in the morning with, with an almond milk or something, um, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you know, pasta with, with marinara sauce, um, you know, uh, bean burritos, you know, some of those, some of these foods that I could go to if I didn't know what else to, to eat. So kind of identifying what I was familiar with and, 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 and kind of having those in my back pocket. The other thing that I use as a way to, to help uh, uh, the transition is I actually followed a, a magazine called Forks Over Knives. They have a, a documentary, um, they have an app, different things like that. So that's really where I first started just diving into the realm of uh, preparing my own meals, getting ideas, different things like that. Um, so I would say if, if anyone is uh, out there and they're newer to this space, Forks Over Knives is a, is a great resource and it's easy to use, gives you good ideas and makes it very simple, shopping list, grocery cards, uh, grocery list, things like that. And then I was just receptive to the, the fact that you know, the documentaries out there, uh, as I mentioned, Forks Over Knives, you know, What the Health. Um, I just, I, I became more receptive to it. And then also seeing people from a social media perspective who were kind of disproving the myth that, you know, you needed meat and different things like that for, uh, uh, for your diet. So that's kind of how I slowly made, made my shift and following um, those who I found um, to provide good information, inspirational, what have you. Interesting. So where would people find um, some of the documentaries, Forks Over Knives, and you mentioned the, the app as well? Uh, are they just readily available online? They are. They are. So I know Forks Over Knives, I think, is on Amazon. Um, some of these other films, you know, and obviously Amazon and Netflix will have uh, suggestions as well. Um, so that's how I became aware of some other ones. Um, the app is, as I know, is available on both Android phones as well as iPhones. Um, so that's available for folks as well. And then I know that the magazines come out and there's a variety of magazines, not just the Forks Over Knives magazines, but um, I do know those magazines come out every few months as well. So uh, I just became receptive to that. And, and, and uh, they have good articles in there, too, as well, that help provide like testimonials and different things like that. So that's what worked for me. 
yeah and you you mentioned that um you had certain people online that you kind of followed and looked up to so I'd be really interested to know who who your inspirations are and who you actually look to for motivation yeah so uh actually that's a that's a good question so there are quite a few folks like obviously Nimai it was definitely uh, a, a, a you know very influential in in my in my transition because I think his story is is very unique that he's never eaten meat you know he has he was born into a vegetarian lifestyle and then he shifted to full vegan. So he's definitely up there. Um, there's another uh, uh, gentleman, uh, Tori Washington. He is more of a traditional uh, bodybuilder. Um, there's a guy, Badass Vegan was another one. Um, conscious, the Conscious Muscle is, is another uh, gentleman in the, in the vegan fitness space. Um, and I'm sure there's a ton of other ton of others but even on the the female uh, side of things you know you have Bianca Taylor um, there's uh, chef Babette she is uh, she makes it known she's at this point I think in her late 60s maybe even 70 but she's out there crushing it um, in the vegan world she has a restaurant too out in California um, who else uh, there's uh Another one I think is toning, toning Tony, uh, T O N I, toning dot Tony, I believe. There, there are. I, I will simply say there are quite a few uh, out there. I just, I can't think of them all, but yeah, some of those folks were the ones that kind of caused me to take a step back and realize, you know what? They're kind of proving that I don't necessarily need to be eating these things. So yeah, I would say some. Those are some of the folks that that first jumped out at me so yeah and for, for the people that, that don't know um Nimai who was mentioned Nimai Delgado he's a pro bodybuilder head coach of um the the vegan fitness challenge or, or the plant power challenge is it now yeah he was in game changers another documentary as well so yep. excellent documentary yes yes yeah, so there's quite a few pioneers of, of, of living this way that are busting the myths. And a lot of the people you've mentioned, are, uh, they're doing the bodybuilding thing. They're, they're really health conscious people. Indeed, indeed. And I think you, the beauty of it is um, they're doing it from all different perspectives. You know, it's, as I mentioned, male versus female um, or male and female, you have all different ethnicities and, and, um, you know, they're, they're, they're presenting a vegan plant-based lifestyle, again, from the perspective of, you know, when you approach it from a fitness side, you are really kind of trying to go after a, a, a mindset that has been in place for years. And it can be very, it can be, it can be eye opening for people. The fact that, you know, you are vegan or you are plant-based and you don't look like it. You know, I think that is, um, that's something that's very, very telling. You know, Why it can do be you very think, impactful. Yeah, it is impactful. And it really, it impacted me as well. Um, seeing Nimai and, and a lot of the people that you mentioned and yourself, but why do you think that is? Why do you think, uh, people are so like, you know, they can't believe somebody could be vegan and, you yeah, know, yeah. have a physique like you. Well, I think it just gets down to the fact that meat has, meat has always been, the well, a few things. I think meat has always been the viewed as like the manly thing. You know, you, 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 you have meat because you're eating these animals that are big and strong and you need to, you know, be like them. So I think there is a, a bit of meat is manly type vibe out there um, that it, it's, you have to be able to kind of take a step back from that and realize that that may be the mindset, but that's not, that's not necessarily the truth of the matter. Now, I think there's some other factors at play there. Number one, the common thing nowadays is how something tastes. 
you know, people are like, oh, well, it, the meat tastes so good, you know, so I, I can't, I can't give it up. Um, I, I always tend to argue, well, number one, this is 2021. If I can go to the grocery store and I can get, I saw the other day, jelly beans that are butter popcorn flavored. I'm like, you can kind of make anything taste like anything if that's all you're, you're focusing on. And, and the truth of the matter too, is that we pretty much everything at this point has been veganized. Um, so again, if you're purely focusing on taste, um, there's a very good chance that there's something else out there for you that can, that can um, uh, achieve that goal. Um, so I think that's also there. Um, but I also think the fact is that people are like, oh, well, my ancestors or what have you, um, they ate meat um, all the time. And that, to, from that perspective, number one, I can't speak for everyone, but the, I, 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 the way I've known it to be is that your ancestors didn't, your ancestors didn't just weren't sitting on a couch, uh, ordered uh, a meal from an app um, and had it delivered within hours. Like you're, you're speaking to what your ancestors did. Your ancestors were like outdoors all day working you know, growing everything and, 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 um, and what have you. And it's just like, you gotta be careful how you pick and choose what you um, would like to kind of highlight about what your ancestors were doing and think that, oh, well, you can't change um, because of that. It was a very different time. And arguably people, even if they were eating meat, um, it, it, it's something that, I know for many people, it, 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 you still were getting uh, just a more diversified diet. You know, you still were getting those fresh uh, veggies and different things like that. So I think it was a very different time. And then you also still had, you're always going to have an exception, but you also still had people passing away from some of the same things. You might not have known what they were, but, you know, as meat, uh, as the meat intake increased, so did things like, you know, uh, the high blood pressure, the blocked arteries, the, the heart um, issues and different things like that. So I think, um, I, and, you know, I obviously gave a lot of information, but just circling back, you know, people think that the meat, meat is manly. They look at it just from taste uh, side of things and they just want to latch, like, they don't want to take a step back from, oh, well, my ancestors you know, did it well, your ancestors did a lot of things. So I don't see you trying to, they would, your ancestors used to have to go to the outside to go to the bathroom. I don't see you looking to, you know, go out to, you know, revisit that aspect of the family tree. So it's just, it's just interesting how people kind of pick apart that. So yeah, really, really insightful answer. And um, your ancestors might have killed animals with their bare hands as well. Exactly. Your, we your ancestors didn't that. know where your, where their next meal was coming from. You know, let's let's talk about that aspect. You literally, again, just sat on your couch, scroll through your phone, pick something, and you know, you you have, and I don't mean to, you know, come across in a um, in a way that's judgmental, but it's just if you really take a step back and look at how much things have evolved and different things like that, one could argue that that would also entail involving taking a, a more holistic view of what one's diet looks like. So I think it's just, a, it can, it, it sparks a lot of questions for folks. And I think it's about getting that dialogue going, getting them to, to think and question some things that they may never have questioned before that can really have the most impact. Sure. And you, you, you mentioned, you know, people, everyone's got a phone, everyone's got access to technology, all the information um, is available on these devices. So do you think advertising has got something to do with this as well? Yes, yes. I think, you know, I was, a. Uh, um, it worked on me. You know, I remember growing up, we used to have in the States here, um, a got milk, you know, commercial, um, where had me drinking milk, like I had a tail and, you know, and, and four legs, you know, so it's just like, uh, you, the advertising is powerful. Um, 
but you notice a lot of times the advertising was for things that were, um, you never really saw an advertisement for tomatoes. You never saw an advertisement for kale. You know, you never saw an advertisement for veggies. You know, it was always for, you know, meats. It was always for milk. It was always for fast food restaurants, different things like that. So, you know, if one were maybe to take a look at those items and maybe some other aspects of, um, you know, maybe even from looking at more of a medical field, if there were any correlation to there being this push almost for eating more meat, drinking more milk, go to this fast food place, different things like that. Maybe these, and and then in turn, the more sugar, um, sugary foods, salty foods, processed foods. Um, you know, I think you just have to be very careful, um, of that. And the advertising can push those things on you that maybe might not necessarily be, be the best for you. I'll put it like that, but it's for your health overall, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes total sense. And interesting that you you say that about certain things that are advertised and and healthy things not advertised. It wasn't so long ago that um, I think doctors were advertising cigarettes and saying, you know, cigarettes are great. Smoke cigarettes. That is why I think you have to be very careful with advertising. I think that's why you you just have to be mindful that just because it's on TV, just because it gets your attention, just because it's it's kind of hitting you in the face, that does not necessarily mean that it's inherently good for you. You know, some company has likely paid millions of dollars to advertise and your health is pr- may not be what they are ultimately looking uh, um, to focus on with that advertisement. They're just looking to focus a lot of times on quote unquote need for a certain taste, for a certain sweetness, for a certain, and there are some, and this is, this is a, kind of a, a deeper conversation. There's, there's reasons why those are triggers for the, uh, for the mind, but it's still warrants um, being able to take a step back and realize that Again, the healthiest foods are going to be the ones that are the least uh, um, processed. Um, the, the ones that, you know, you can clearly identify as, um, you know, what they are. You know, if you can flip over uh, something on an ingredient list and you know what everything is, uh, that's, that's awesome. Now, I say that with a, with a star just because... More and more people are becoming aware of, the, of a vegan lifestyle, a vegan diet, different things like that. And to that extent, companies are also becoming aware of this. So you're going to see, again, those vegan items out there. You're going to see the vegan pizzas, the, the vegan ice creams, the vegan milkshakes, and different things like that. They are vegan. So they're not involving any animals. But in the same regard, those still more processed foods, though they may be um, tasty for a meal or something like that, you still wouldn't even want to make those foods a, a, a habit because number one, you're not giving your body the, the real nutrients, all the nutrients that they can benefit from, from a diversified diet. But number two, you are still, you, you, you very well could be, again, if you're taking it from a health perspective, you, um, still may run into some of the same things that you could run into in a processed, um, here we call say a standard American diet, which is the weight gain, the, you know, the sugar highs and lows, different things like that. So I think that's the big thing that one must consider when they are, you know, looking to make that shift in going vegan and going plant-based again, more so for health, knowing that all those health benefits that you're hearing, they're coming because people are taking the time to, um, fix their own food. They're mindful of the oils, the fats uh, that they're putting in there. And they're, they're, they're bringing it back to the natural food. You know, they're bringing it back to the veggies. They're bringing it back to the beans, the oats, and they're getting creative from there. That's where you start really seeing some of those benefits. 
yeah the whole food plant-based diet people are really thriving off that and I'd love to touch on that a little bit more um, because I know you coach uh, a lot of people and you see a lot of a lot of progress every week you mentioned we're 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 a little bit into to the challenge to the the uh, eight-week plant power challenge so I'd, I'd be really interested to know what changes you've witnessed personally as a coach and your clients from going vegan or or becoming a more healthier version of themselves as a vegan. Yeah, um, the changes I've witnessed. Number one, the biggest change is people are becoming more in tune with their bodies. You know, I, I, and this is for the people uh, who are partaking in the challenge that the scale may not do a whole lot of moving, but they still notice a change in their clothes. They notice the change in their, uh, their muscle definition. Um, And that's very empowering for people because not everyone out there is looking to gain 10, 15 pounds. Not everyone is looking to lose 10 or 15 pounds. Some people just really do want to um, kind of refine where they are. So I think it's, it's, it's great when someone is doing that. You know, they're realizing that their journey may not be the same as someone else's and they may get to whatever that end goal is, but just at a different time than, um, than others. So it's, a, it's the increased self-confidence that I see in a number of people that I think is huge. But I think, you know, the other change is people are becoming in tune to their food. You know, uh, I'm a huge, I personally use a chronometer to track my um, nutrients and things like that. So people are getting back in touch with their food. And I think that's huge because the more you, you, you can't control everything in the world, but, you know, you can control in most cases, the food that you put in your mouth. So when you can, you know, you determine that, okay, well, I'm a little low on calcium. It seems like if I'm tracking, then what can I eat? You can, you know, look at kale, you know, you can see, uh, or if you, you, you know, you're, you're looking to tap into more of those um, essential fatty acids, you know, where can you get those from your chia seeds, your hemp seeds, your, your nuts and different things like that. So I also see the fact, um, the benefits coming from that people are just becoming more aware of their food. So, you know, the physical benefits are there. We absolutely are seeing folks who are losing a ton of weight. We are seeing folks that are gaining a ton of weight because that's what their goal is. But we see folks in the middle as well. We see folks who are, again, becoming more in tune to their bodies. They're becoming more in tune to their, um, their diet but they're also just getting this sense of structure and organization and um, like a roadmap on how to um, reach their goals. So I, I, that's the biggest benefit that I've seen. Obviously the physical is there, but there's so much more um, that, that comes with that as well. I mean, what about the mental health aspect as well? The fact that the fact that people, this, that it just the, the, the vegan fitness program, the plant power challenge program provides structure for people. It is how it helps people to really take control of something that they, you never, you don't know their story. Like they may have had issues for years with whether, whether their weight and different things like that. And the impact that that has had on them. And we're not even, again, talking about people who are trying to um, uh, necessarily uh, lose weight, but the, the mental impacts of people trying to gain weight as well. You know, there's, it can go on both sides. So I think the mental side of it, from what I've seen, um, is most impactful in that you're helping people take control of something that they may have felt they'd never had control of before. And that's huge because there's so much, as I mentioned before, that is out of our control, whether it is the stuff that goes on at work, whether it's the stuff that goes on, you know, necessarily in your family. If you can help someone to take control over um, their, their diet, their fitness, 
you know, that that's going to help to alleviate so much stress. And even when, if there's a very rough day for them, what can they do? They can go to the gym and they can focus, you know, their energy, their release there. What else can they do? They can go, you know, sometimes for me, I'll, I'll use my cooking time as a time to literally throw on some headphones and, and, and zone out. So um, I know that to be the mental side of it, but I know others um, have benefited from the fact that they are, um, they're just feeling better about what they, what they are eating. They feel they have a community of folks, a supportive network of folks to talk to. And so the mental benefit is huge as well. It's very powerful. I can, I can speak from personal experience as well. Um, incorporating that kind of control and focusing so much on your diet, it does emanate into other aspects of your life. It, it really does give you that focus and that discipline. And you, you start to just feel just mentally uplifted, physically stronger. And um, I think there's so many people now that are doing it, that are proving that you can go vegan and be healthy and be really strong and recover faster, like you said, that there's, there's so many reasons to do this. Mm -hmm. And another question, another question I had was, what, what do you think about the future of our Mother Earth? You know, if about the, the environmental aspect you mentioned and actually the survival of, of human species if we, if we don't make some of these changes? I, yeah, that's, that's a good question. I think we, um, you know, if you can't, if you aren't making steps to respect the ground that you need to grow fruit from, if you're not taking steps to um, take care of the air you need to breathe, if you're not taking steps to take care of the water you need to drink, what arguably is, is going to be more important than that? Because whatever you're deeming as more important than that, is it really going to exist if those things are not around? You know, so I think the, the, the vegan side of it, the, it, it, the, the, the environmental side of it is huge. You know, people are like, oh, well, you know, almonds uh, take up uh, just as much water as a cow. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard a number of, of different, um, uh, uh, or I won't even say statistics, but people try to make cases for it. And it's just the fact that the way the, the structure of things is, is presently is, you know, you get a you get a field, you clear a field to plant wheat or grains or whatever, to then give that wheat and grains not to people who can eat those wheat that wheat in in those grains, but you give them to cows or whatever you know you're going to eat, and the cows also need a ton of water. They go to the bathroom, and so there's you know. Uh, cow waste everywhere you know it pollutes it, you, it's how you get different forms of algae bacteria and then you slaughter the cow it's like you, you you're adding a step you're adding a step at, that is just bringing immense stress to the ecosystem and so i just feel that going the vegan route you, if you can go directly to the source again to the plants and cut out the middleman of the pigs or the 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 the, the cows or, or what have you, that's that's huge. You know, everyone. I remember a few years ago, people were like, "Oh, well, we're gonna stop. We're gonna save the the fish in the ocean by we're gonna stop using plastic straws." I mean, you could just save the fish in the ocean by just stop eating the fish in the ocean. So you know, I think. I think there's a, a education that needs to be to take place. Again, it's all about getting people to take a step back and, and really kind of analyze, question things that they may never have questioned before. And that's not always easy. So I think the environmental aspect is huge is the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks for being so honest as well um, with, with, with your answers. One, one final uh, question for you. 
health, wealth, or relationships are three base basic human needs. What order would you do uh, you put these in? Oh, you know the expression that comes to mind is health is wealth, and that is because you can have all the money in the world, but if your health to the extent that you can control is, is, is kind of out of your control. You, if you're ending up in a hospital bed, you, you may have to, you may have the money to even be on that hospital bed, but you're still laying there because of aspects of your health that may very well have been prevented. So I think health is, is extremely important. Um, the relationship aspect is huge too. Um, I think it's about having a balance in, in the relationship. It's not even just a person type relationship. Obviously that's huge as well. You know, making sure you're on the same page with the, with a partner or whatever, what, what have you. But I think it's just the relationship that you have too with, with yourself, the relationships you have with, with food, with health, with, with, um, with money. So to me, relationships are all about balance and, I think that, you know, your health is extremely important. The relationships are there and the wealth is there. I probably, so I, I kind of would view it. Those are, I don't know if I necessarily gave it a hierarchy, but, you know, health, relationships are right up there and wealth kind of being secondary, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's a really great takeaway as well from, from the conversation today, that um, health is wealth. Yes. Yeah. Health is wealth. Indeed. I think uh, if you can tap into that, you're going to, you literally are going to feel like a million bucks. If you can tap into a healthier uh, way of eating, if you can tap into a fit version of yourself, you are going to be happy. Your happiness is going to show. It's got, people are going to be able to feel it. People are going to see it in your skin. They're going to see it in your, just the way in which you carry yourself. That's something that a lot of people are looking for. And I, I, I am a strong believer that diet is, is really going to be a gateway to helping people tap into something that they have always had control of. Well, they, for the most part, they, they have had control, of it, but they maybe didn't even realize it. So. Yeah. And, and when, when you do vibrate this, this, this healthy aura as well, you, you attract, you could attract wealth. You can attract more, more to you with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, um, it can go a long way. It can go a long way. I think that, you know, that is very much one thing we, we have to be careful of, you know, in this society. Obviously money is important. Money is, 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 is the physical sense of wealth is, is obviously part of all of, of the society, but you you can't get away from how you can literally feel like a million bucks if you're health. And this is at any age, you know, it's not just youth. You know, we put this, we put, you know, the twenties and thirties and, you know, on such a pedestal when, you know, if you are 60 years old and you're just vibrant and you're out there, you're staying active versus another, you know, 60 year old who maybe in a different set of circumstances, like you're going to, you're going to be aware of that that's something that's going to just, it's going to radiate, you know? And I think, um, you can literally, your diet can literally be the way you feel like a million bucks. So. Epic. And I think that's a really great sentiment and message, um, to end on today. So um, where, where, where can folks find you, Rod, if they, if they want to follow you online or if they, if they are interested in your coaching services, where can folks uh, look for you? Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to be contacted, um, namely through, through Instagram, uh, at train like a vegan. Um, you'll see a, a ton of stuff. I, I, I like to kind of give people a variety um, where it is mostly going to be training based, but you're going to see meal ideas. You're going to see... Um, an appreciation of nature, 
Um, you're gonna see. You're you're probably gonna just see something fresh each each post. I don't like to necessarily do the same type of post over and over and over again. Um, but so you know, you might see a, a fitness post on Monday, a meal post on Tuesday. I do grow my own veggies. Um, you know, depending on the season, so you might see that in there. Um, so I just try to provide a, a balance, if you will, uh, showing a bit of a relationship to a variety of things. Cool. So the train like a vegan on Instagram, you can uh, find Rod. Thank you just so much for uh, being such a, such an inspiration as well in the vegan community to myself and, and others. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Absolutely. Thank you uh, for having me, Dave.